to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series, where we bring you the best and brightest SaaS solutions for CPAs who want to bring value-added services to their clients. Every episode is an interview with a new solution provider dedicated to you, tomorrow's CPA. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series. I'm really excited today. I have a friend of mine, Yosef West. He is the co-founder of Relay. So, Yosef, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and then tell us about Relay? That sounds great, Jeff. It's, uh, it's great to be here and uh, excited to chat with you today, of course. Um, happy Friday. We are recording on a Friday. Um, <laughs> so, uh, like my background, uh, I've been working in like SMB FinTech for, for most of my career. Uh, spent some time at a company called Wave. Uh, some of you might know it for kind of like free accounting uh, for really the micro SMB market. Um, and then uh, joined HubDoc as like the third employee and kind of built out a marketing function um, as we scaled uh, scaled that business. Um, and how we got, shall I roll into like how we got to Relay and what it is? Yeah, roll yeah. Right in. perfect. So, so at HubDoc, we noticed like there were a couple issues that small business owners and their clients consistently faced, uh, predominantly around like access to financial information like every small business owner really struggled with kind of understanding what was happening in their business. And we've all been sold this dream of like kind of real-time financials, but without actual access to the real uh, kind of system of record data, um, it's actually really hard to get real-time financials uh, for these business owners as we all have kind of seen in the industry. Uh, No matter how hard we try, it's just slightly out of reach. Um, And what we kind of realized was like, how do you solve access to financial information as well as like quality of financial information for these SMBs? And when we looked at it, we kind of thought, could you build like middleware between the bank and the accounting system? Like, what, how could you really solve this? And what we realized was that the only way to truly solve this problem was to actually be the business bank account. Because over the last five to seven years, every part of the small business back office has changed except for one. Um, and that's really the, the nerve center of it all, right? It's a bank account. Um, it's where all the data feeds from. Uh, it is, it's, it's everything. And yet traditionally it's like very siloed. And so our view was basically like, what if you built a modern digital bank account that was deeply integrated into the systems a small business owner relies on? Could you increase financial visibility? Could you help them become more successful? Um, and that's how Relay was born. So Relay is banking designed for growing businesses. We make it easy to collaborate with user permissions. You can manage all your bills from your bank account, which is like really sweet. And then you can manage your business spending using Relay cards. I love that. So you are officially a bank. And I just want to point out because accountants are always nervous, but you're part of the FDIC. So you've got all the security. This is a a bank designed for, that's, I'm not often speechless, but I love, you know, everybody else has started with the premise. We're stuck with the big five and you know, here's how we do the best we can do. Um, I I love that you were both naive and arrogant enough to say, well, let's take it on. I love that. The Entrepreneurial CPA Series is proudly sponsored by Excolo 33, Building Value. Visit us at excolo33.com. Are you a partner of a CPA firm struggling to be seen as the expert in a sea of sameness? Are you looking to differentiate yourself and your firm as providing true value-added services and not just ticking boxes on your client's compliance checklist? Excola 33 is a coaching business dedicated to accelerating growth and profitability in your CPA firm. Our 100-day business growth challenge has helped firms just like yours generate leads, create profitable relationships, and stand out as tomorrow's CPA firm. Sign up for Xcola 33's free training, Eight Steps to Productize Your Service, where you will discover three reasons service companies are getting hit hard now. You will learn the surprising secret that Harvard professor Theodore Levitt taught his students about why we buy. See how nine service businesses transform themselves into product companies and get the eight step formula for productizing your service. Click the link below or visit us at bit.ly slash text dash eight steps. Again, the link is below. 
This is a free course. It's a workshop and we'll walk you through how you can implement the eight steps to productize your service. Um, so, so I guess there's a couple things there. So we, from a regulatory perspective, can't say Relay is a bank because it, it's not. Okay. We work with a bank called Evolve Bank and Trust. Uh, they've been around since 1925. They have half a billion dollars in assets. And it's through them that we're able to offer FDIC insured accounts. For our customers, these are Relay accounts, but you know, underlying kind of the Relay branding and the Relay card and all and the software is a Evolve Bank account. Um, and so charter that's bank. a charter bank. So that's how we're able to, in partnership with them, and they do what they're great at, which is be a bank and, you know, compliance and regulation and all that stuff. And we get to focus on what we're great at, which is building great software and delivering amazing customer service. Um, and so it's a really great partnership. Um, and we're doing this first for the U.S. market, and then we'll come to Canada, hopefully, this coming year. Oh, that's awesome. That is, I, I love that. Like, that is just Again, that's the whole point of doing this show. I love talking to the entrepreneurs. I love talking to the innovators. Um, I, I can't imagine how much frustration you had. You know, I know at HubDoc, that was one of the big challenges. You would do your thing and everything would work and then the banks would change their security and all of a sudden you're getting yelled at. <laughs> so I, I love how entrepreneurs just take completely out of the box. They throw out all the pieces and say, okay, let's start over. How do we fix this? Um, that was amazing. So what has been your biggest turning point in your company so far? Yeah, so um, initially kind of where we started, given our kind of background, was like, how do we sell this through accounts and bookkeepers? Uh, that was where we really started. And so accounts and bookkeepers love Relay for three reasons. One is uh, they get a partner portal, just like QBOA or Zero HQ. Two, they get direct bank feeds into the accounting system. So, you know, we're one of 10 banks in the US, 10 out of the 5,000, 10 that actually have like API to API connection. So software talks directly to each other. There's no screen scraping, which is very unreliable. So you get a reliable bank feed, huge. And then three is they get enriched transaction data. So when a check is deposited, you can actually see the check information coming into the accounting system. Um, and there's a number of other enrichments that we do. So accounts and bookkeepers love that. And so initially when we came to market with a product, there were two goals. One is let's deliver banking feature parity. So this is comparable to a Bank of America product. Um, and then two, can we satisfy the pain points of accounts and bookkeepers as a starting point? So we did those two things and we would go and sell this to accounting and bookkeeping firms and their feedback to us, Jeff, was basically like, this is amazing. I want all my clients on this. How do I sell this? You know, yeah. I need to meet on the bones above just like, you know, free digital banking. I see the value for me, but like, how do I sell this to my clients? And so our view from the beginning has been like, how do you build software on top of a bank? And how do you deliver that integrated experience that would deliver a lot of value above and beyond what you think of as a traditional bank? Um, and so where we started uh, is around bill pay because every bank has online bill pay. They all suck, right? Um, it's just, it's just not a core competency. Terrible, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, for the, all the reasons why Bill.com is like IPO'd, right? Like that's that's basically the bet. Um, and so what we built was actually an integration into the accounting system, into QuickBooks Online, as well as Zero to automatically pull in unpaid bills. Um, you have approval workflows baked in, and it, since it's all vertically integrated, um, you get faster payment times, you get next day business, next business day payments. Um, you get no clearing account um, and you get, you know, kind of, uh, you basically get like approval workflows baked into your bank. Um, and so that for us was actually the biggest turning point in being able to sell Relay because people were like, oh, not only do I get this bank, which solves all these pain points for my business, but also I have this fun set of functionality where I can say to my clients, well, let's start using Relay for this use case, right? And that really started to drive distribution for us. Um, and that was that was a, a big kind of first step because organically what we were seeing even before this was that people would start with us uh, around a specific problem set that they wanted to solve and organically over time actually just switch over to Relay uh, versus like a Bank of America or Wells Fargo. Right. No, I love that. That's like solving the bank problem with software is huge. Um, so. I know you're a relationship guy and I'm going to ask the question. I'm guessing I know the answer, but I want to hear it. Uh, 
since you started, what's given you the best traction in your business? Uh, what's given us the best traction? Um, like, do you mean in terms of like channels, in terms of like in problem of, solved? Well, the fact that you use the word channel kind of gives me a clue. That's kind of where I'm going. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to tell you what I think, and I want you to tell me if, if it's different. Um, but I, I believe that your biggest results came from the fact that you've partnered with a channel, accountants and bookkeepers, and I've heard over and over, and I know you well enough, um, you've listened to what their pain is. Would that be a fair comment that listening to your audience has helped you get some traction? I know it seems like a, an obvious question, but you have no idea how many people talk, talk, talk and don't listen and you listen. So I wanted to point that out. Yeah, uh, no, I, I really appreciate it. Um, what a wild idea uh, to listen to the people that you want to use your product. I know that's crazy. Um, yeah, like we we had a lot of like, you know, going back to the earliest days of this of this business, um, the sets of conversations we had, we had conversations on the account and bookkeeper side where, you know, I'd call up a lot of people that I knew from the industry and say, hey, thinking about doing this thing, want to ask you a bunch of questions about it you know, do you have time? And people are so generous and kind and like, we'd go through it and get a bunch of great answers. And I kind of felt confident that like on the account and bookkeeper side, I could sell them something, right? Who knows how well it would sell, but I like some, some level of confidence there that this is such a big pain point that we could get them there. And then on the small business side, uh, we wanted to access small business owners and just get their feedback. And we realized the fastest way we could do it would be to go door to door uh, to restaurants and coffee shops because uh, where else are the business owners going to be? Those You know, those business owners are working their business on those days. And um, we would go and have conversations uh, across different neighborhoods in Toronto um, and meet with restaurateurs or coffee shop owners or whoever, anyone who would talk to us. And sometimes you would have the most awkward conversation. Uh, and then sometimes you'd have like the most wonderful conversation because, uh, you know, small business owners, as you and I know, are such a dynamic group of people. Um, and, uh, it, anyways, it was, that's kind of where, where it all started was really trying to understand their pain points around financial visibility and, and banking. I love that. And the reason I asked that question is a lot of accountants sit back and think, well, my client should ask me this. It's like, no, you should ask them. So I, I love that, that, that novelty of, of literally, and, you know, for you, you know, knocking on restaurants you know, going to coffee shops, I think a lot of accountants would be terrified of that. But I just want to drive it home that they have relationships with businesses. You know, so if they're looking at changing or innovating, I feel like they should be talking to their clients. You know, not trying to sell them banking or sell them a solution, but identify their pain and say, well, I think we can help you solve that. I think the like, you know, if, if we were to describe the emotional kind of uh, roller coaster of, of doing that stuff, right? Like the the intensity of like just going in cold, right? Um, I think no matter what personality type you are, it's terrifying, right? It, it's slightly embarrassing. It's it's all of those things. Fear uh, rejection. Yeah, hundred percent. Like entirely terrified of being like, no, why are you wasting my time? Or someone like not caring or whatever, right? Um, I think, for, at least for me, talking about my own personal experiences doing this stuff, it's often just, number one, scripting it out a little bit and just thinking, okay, what are the questions I'm going to ask? How am I going to approach this? And you do that in advance of going and doing the thing you're scared of doing. Um, and then once you get there, just number one, it doesn't matter if you fail because no one's going to remember. That's that's like a good... No one you. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, I think that's that's the thing, right? You can get over it. Right? You're worried about what other people are, are really going to think, especially like your clients, if you're an advisor and trying just figuring out what that script is and asking the question for me, like once I do it once, then the fear dissipates a bit because I was like, that is nowhere as bad as I expected it to be in my brain. Yep. Right. Our imaginations are crazy things. Um, and the person Keep was the perfect. That's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. And so it's just really trying that, yeah, that first step, uh, that first attempt. Um, I, I love it. That's uh, it again. I, I just bring it up because I know you and I know that you're, you're talking to people and listening and 
for some reason that seems like a foreign concept. So um, I love that. Uh, now I'm going to ask you a very personal question, but what's a big pitfall or mistake that you've learned a lot from in your journey with Relay? Hmm. Big pitfall or mistake I've learned from my journey with Relay. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of mistakes is the trouble. Uh, it's like, which one do you choose? Um, which is the big one. And I think that's the key with entrepreneurs, Joseph, is we don't see them as mistakes. We see them as, okay, I learned how not to do that. Let's try something else. So let's call it what was a big experiment that you learned a lot from there. That's probably a better word. Yeah. So I, I think the the thing, like it may, perhaps what I can just share is kind of the, the growth journey, right? Um, it's when we kind of went into this, we expected to be able to get live like really quickly. Um, and it took us some time to be able to actually get the product live in the hands of customers. It took us about six months after raising capital to go and do that. And we'd made promises to, to investors and, and all this stuff. Um, and it was, it was horrible, to be perfectly honest. Uh, not that anyone was giving us any pressure or flack or whatever. I mean, sure, some people were asking. But on our side, we kind of felt like, oh, this was this promise we made and we weren't able to deliver on it for reasons outside of our control, but still. And when I reflect on that as like kind of the journey as like an entrepreneur is you're constantly trying to grow and evolve and change. And so we're now going from the, we're going to this next stage of growth uh, for the company today. And I kind of look back at our last 12 months and what were kind of good things that I did and what were things that I that I were okay for me to do during the stage, right? But as we go into that next stage, what are things I need to drop and I need to change? Um, and that as like a constant mindset can be really challenging. So I was just talking to my co-founder, Paul, about this today, where it's like, you know, both of us want to drive the business forward. And the easiest way to kind of drive your business forward is often to be like, oh, I'm just going to work with clients. I'm going to go work on product. I'm going to go do some marketing, right? And oftentimes it's the thing that you actually have to do is the non-urgent, high impact tasks, which for us today is like recruiting. And so we're each spending 50% plus of our time on recruiting. And when you're recruiting people, you it, it, it's not a, oh, I did this many hours of work and I can see the product of my work. A little check box you can mark off and say, oh, that's done. Not at all, right? You're just like getting on the phone with people, talking it through, and maybe it's fit, maybe it's not. And until you have the person in the seat, there's no satisfaction in it whatsoever. But that is 100% the right thing to work on. And so what we're trying to train ourselves to, to think like is really that um, we have to be long-term minded um, and find ways to really work on the business as opposed to in the business. And I would say that that's like a big mindset shift that we're, we're working on. I love that. Um, and I, I think that's, I, I appreciate you being vulnerable like that because, you know, most people want to be, and, and I will let you talk about the highlights, but, you know, I, what I'm trying to accomplish with this is for the CPAs that are in our audience to see what your company does and who you are. But more importantly, I'd really like them to leave with a sense that entrepreneurs are always, you know, the last call I was on, um, he talked about, you know, taking the hill and you get to the top of the hill, like entrepreneurs are always in battle. There's always that next demon to conquer, the next level to, to rise to. And, and I love that you're going through that journey. Um, so now I am going to turn around. What's your proudest moment as you look back on, you know, since you've launched Relay, uh, what's the big moment where you, you were probably most proud and you said, you know, this is a thing and it's going to work? Yeah, but here's the trouble. I have those moments all the time uh, where I'm like, yeah, this is going to this is going to go. This is going to be great. And it's it's funny because you have those early like I remember when we were we first launched the product like June 2019 and our goal for like deposits was like thirty thousand dollars. Right. And I was like, Fuck, you know, sorry, I, I really hope that we can get there. Right. Um, and, you know, when that happened, we we're like, oh, my God, this is great. And it, it's just there's kind of. Um, a step function in your expectations, right? Because the you know tens of millions of dollars that go through Relay every month uh, today, uh, right? Which is crazy to think about compared to us scraping together thirty thousand dollars of deposits like a year and a half ago, basically. Um, 
and now it's it's more like you kind of think about the the order of magnitude like how do you go from you know the thousands of businesses that we have using the product today to you know 10,000 20,000 um and that's that as you said right it's it is taking the hill um I, I think the the great moments of personal satisfaction to to directly answer your question. I apologize. Uh, no, no, that that's yeah. a valid answer. But yes, you may directly answer as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the the personal satisfaction is when you see like a great customer review, right? And it is they say it's as good as you hope it is, right? Um, and I think that's like deeply satisfying. Um, and then seeing, I think seeing the team to come together uh, and the personal growth that you see the team members have, um, I think that's like another just source of pride, right? Um, I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Now, I, I'm guessing you've had some big mentors. Who who has been the biggest influence on you in your career? And what's the best piece of advice that you still follow today? Oh, man. I'm terrible at questions like that. Uh, I'm absolutely terrible at it. Um, okay, I'll turn it around. Um, what's the best piece of advice you'd give for a CPA out there who's looking to grow their accounting practice? Um, I think one of the best things about the kind of accounting and bookkeeping community is how cooperative it is. It's co-opetition, right? Um, and if I'm uh, an advisor, the first thing I'm doing is I'm joining every Facebook group I can. Uh, I'm messaging people to see if they'll get on a Zoom and say, hey, here's where I am in my journey. I'm trying to figure out how to get to the next stage. Would you have 15, 20 minutes for a Zoom call? Um, I will. I would greatly appreciate it. And you know, maybe out of 10 people, seven people won't respond, but I bet you three would. Um, and especially in this day and age where everyone's stuck at home anyways. People have time. People have time. They need human connection, right? Um, and so that might be that would be like my biggest piece of advice. Um, I think like the. I think depending on where you are in your journey, the advice and impact can be very different. Um, uh, I learned a ton during my time at Wave. I learned a ton during my time at HubDoc. Um, I think the like biggest learning for me working with both Jamie's um, was basically like how to balance being the human, right? And being the like nice person that they, they both are while also being, you know, uh, very efficient and uh, functional at getting things done. Um, and being able to strike that balance, I think prior to working with them, I was more on the um, like, let's just get stuff done as quickly as possible, right? And finding that that right balance as a leader, I think that was uh, that was a really great learning. Um, and I don't think that's something that they necessarily articulated directly as a piece of advice, but you could see it in the way they acted um, and working with them around, you know, whether it was our relationship with Intuit and Zero, um, or when we were recruiting people, it, it just, it really shone through. So, uh, yeah. That, I think that would be the biggest thing. I love it. That's great advice. Um, that is huge. Uh, is there anything I haven't asked you that an audience of CPAs should ask, and I haven't asked on their behalf, anything you'd like to give as a kind of final thoughts of what they could do or how they could do it? Yeah, I think the everyone's looking for ways to differentiate their practice and to create standardization. Um, Today, I, I would say that you know most people don't think about banking um, as a way to actually drive differentiation in their services and drive efficiency. The average firm that we talk to is spending an hour per month on like broken bank feeds, auditing those broken bank feeds. Right? It is a lot of time that you are spending, um, and sometimes when we're so deep in the work and so used to doing the work a certain way it can be hard to step back and be like, what if I just, as you said, throw out the box and rebuild this thing, how would I do it? Um, and, you know, banking, what we've seen with firm, you know, some of the best firms in North America that use us uh, is that it can be a great growth enabler and can give you back that hour, two hours. And that doesn't even include like the AP management side of it, right? Enabling you to actually offer accounts payable services. 
Um, so that's kind of, I think, the, the biggest thing is think about it as a way to not only rethink how you're designing your workflow, but also as a, as a great way to actually differentiate your services. Um, because we hear for a lot of firms when they set up a relay account for their clients, they're like, I look like a superstar, yeah. right? No one expects my, me as an accountant or bookkeeper to actually set up their banking and organize it for them. It's a huge weight off my client's shoulders. That's such a, a little thing, but if you think about it, like that's white glove service that it, it, it sets, you know, again, instead of accepting that banking is a terrible thing and we all have to suck it up, um, why not change it? I love that. Exactly. So that, that is great advice. Um, are there a couple of action steps? Because I want this to be about action. Um, are there a couple of action steps that you'd recommend our listeners would take uh, after hearing you and I talk? I mean, obviously, sign up for Relay. Uh, <laughs> go to I Relay. walked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, RelayFI.com. Uh, go sign up for our partner program. That is, uh, yeah, like go, go do that. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, that's the only action to take after this. Uh, okay. Follow us on Twitter at Relay Financial. Um, we hosted a very successful trivia night uh, pre QuickBooks Connect. Um, so we'll be doing more fun stuff like that. So definitely follow us. I would, if I may, I'm going to add an action step. You, you, I love entrepreneurs. You throw ideas and you keep walking and you don't even look back. But the, the, I'm all about value added services and, and accountants differentiating. And truly, I think this would be, you know, this is a game changer with that whole payables management because you can bundle stuff that maybe people, you know, maybe people don't value um, data entry and bookkeeping, but if you can add payables and, and they can eliminate having that receptionist slash payable clerk um, and just let them be a receptionist, um, to me, that's a value added service. So I, I'm gonna second that, go check out relayfi.com. Um, and so we've already talked about where people can go to learn more about you. So. I just want to wrap up and say we've been talking with Yosef West, co-founder of Relay Financial, and it has been an amazing time. I love chatting with you. Um, any parting thoughts for our listeners, Yosef? I guess, you know, given the times, stay safe, stay well, uh, and, you know, keep your head up. Uh, hopefully we'll all get through this soon. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Yosef. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having us.